Deer season comes around every year. But before you know it, it's gone. A frigid wind blows in from the north, bringing with it a desolate white blanket. And you're left wandering the wilderness in search of a cure for the itch. The itch to once again pursue your elusive and ever-evolving prey. There are plenty of remedies to temporarily suppress the itch, like evening rides on the water, or occasionally throwing a line in. But these will not make it go away. In the back of your mind, and at your very core, you will feel it. As images and memories of years past flood your consciousness, you will come to the realization that there is only one cure. Patience. Patience and understanding that one day the itch will be gone. That one day will be opening day. Preparation for this food plot began in January when plenty of snow was still falling. In the future, I expected to be a perennial honey hole, but on day one, a startled doe was the first to enter. I barely got it on film, but this doe's leaping fawn was close behind. Opening morning only produced that quick encounter, but after reviewing the trail camera footage, I knew exactly where I would be sitting that evening. Real spotty, real patchy, but now it grew in a lot better. 
Now, my plans don't always work out, but this evening was different. Like clockwork, at quarter after six, the year and a half five point entered the food plot. Trail camera pictures can tell you a lot about a deer, but to finally see it in person and capture it on video is truly something special. Cautious at first, the young buck eventually starts to feed. While he's nothing to drool over now, he could definitely make the hit list with the proper nutrition and a few more years of growth. The longer I watched him nibble at the clover, the more I wished he was a shooter, as he was providing me with several broadside shots at 20 yards. After nearly an hour, he seemed ready to leave. But that was until he noticed someone else coming in for an evening meal. Seemingly out of nowhere walked in a young fawn with several spots still on its rump. As it too plucked at the clover, I couldn't help but wonder where its mother was. Hopefully it had just wandered off a bit and would still be cared for through its first year of development. Before long, the buck decided to introduce itself. After shooing the fawn away, he continued to mow down the clovers. When he finally did leave, I couldn't help but sit back in my tree stand and be thankful. Thankful for a beautiful opening day of bow season and for two great encounters. But in the back of my mind, I knew this was just the beginning.